Hi, welcome to the Game Splainer. I'm Jeff the Game Splainer, and today I'm Game Splaining February 2022. So, my February was very light on. I think I only played like 11 or 12 games through February uh, with a couple of repeats of the same game. Uh, so, I have managed to pull that down to a top 10, but my 10, my top couple, 10, 9, 8, I'm not even sure how far in, uh, games that you probably wouldn't see on my top 10 lists usually. That's not a problem, they're not bad games, don't misunderstand me, just I usually have other types of games that I'd much prefer to play and get into. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. My number 10 game for February is Happy Little Dinosaurs. Happy Little Dinosaur is a game by Unstable Games. The make of that what you will. I, I kind of did enjoy this, even though it was by those guys. This isn't the type of game that I would normally play. In reality, I can't remember too much about this game. I've only played like a couple of weeks back, but I just can't remember it. I remember playing it, and I think I may have even won, but I don't remember a whole bunch about it. Uh, I just know that you're trying to move a dinosaur along a path, and whoever gets to the end of that path first wins. And there's a whole bunch of cards that will get played from your hand that will cause different things to happen. So make of that what you will. Have a look into it if you haven't come across the game before, uh, but it's not a game that really stickly sits necessarily in the way that I tend to play. My number nine game for February is Point Salad. Point Salad is once again another card game, but this is a card game that sits comfortably with the way that I like to play and all the stuff behind me. In essence, if you are playing with less than six players, you're going to play with less cards in the deck. So every game you play should have different cards coming through. You have the choice of picking up two salad cards or picking up another card, which is the other side of a salad card, to be honest with you, but is a rules card. And those rules are how you're going to get points at the end of the game. And Finding a way to connect the rule cards that you've picked up with the salad cards that you've picked up and making them score is realistically what you're trying to do. As a quick game, we usually play it a couple of times when it hits the table, just to kind of move through all the cards, really. But it's a quick game, I really quite enjoy. My number eight game for February is Seven Summits. Seven Summits is an interesting game. It says it plays down to two players and plays up to five players. I played it with two players back in January, I think it didn't even make the top 10 list. I mean, I played a lot of games in January, don't, be, don't misunderstand me, but it didn't make the top 10 list because I was like, oh, it's a bit, eh, it's a game that happened on the table. Whereas this time I played it with a number of players, I think there were four of us at the table at the time, and it played much more interestingly. There was a much more to think about and kind of negotiate with yourself as to what's going to happen now to be able to get to the top of the summits. And the idea is that you've got a meeple that's going up each of the seven different summits. You choose one of those summits and only one person in each round can choose each of the summits. You roll a die and it moves up that many spots. You then have the choice to continue rolling, but if you continue rolling, you have to roll another die, which will be kind of a hazard die. So it might make you drop to the bottom of the mountain. It might uh, just make you go less distance, etc. So making that choice is really interesting. But the whole concept is that each mountain is worth different points and whoever's got the most points at the end of the game is the winner. So you want to try and get the first person to the top of each of the mountains, if at all possible. I found this quite an interesting game. I will be doing a game plan of it hopefully this month. So please look out for that. My number seven game for February is the Alpha. Now the Alpha made my top 10 list for, for I think it was number 10 game a best game that I played and did a video of last year. And I really, really like it. Why is it so low on this list? Because I think that the element that drew me in on the couple of games I remembered got a little bit lax on this time around. It's still a good game. I still really enjoyed it. Don't misunderstand me. But I played slightly differently. And the way I played really didn't work out well. The whole concept of the game is that you have a pack of wolves and you can send them out to different spots. And then once you're on spots, you can compete with other wolves who have the same number of wolves on that spot to be able to take the spoils. I think that there's one spot that is like a, a farm and only one player can go there and they might get 12 food. And the food is the points real in reality. And uh, so they might get 12 food or they might die. So there's there's a roll of the die and it's a, a chance of which way it will go. 
Uh, I think that the person who won got that at least once. They also went to the larger playing spot uh, outside, which has, again, a really high number of food points on it, uh, but there's a potential you won't get anything from it. I th he got the large number. Um, and I, I, I wasn't playing to go after those. I've found that in previous games, those ones haven't paid out. And it's very much a luck game. And that's really the reality of it. Is Yeah, there's a whole bunch of mind play and, and Prisoner's Dilemma type stuff in this game. But it still comes down to luck in the end. My number six game for February is The Crew. Once again, The Crew comes back into the top ten list. I really like this game. I find that everyone who plays it tends to really like it. I don't think I've come across someone who hasn't liked it. The whole idea of the game is it is a trick-taking game, but is a cooperative trick-taking game. So if you've ever played any trick-taking games, you'll know how to play the crew already. It makes it really easy. If you've got people at the table who have not played trick-taking games before, it's a little bit harder to teach because there's there's not the, the background knowledge of, of, oh, I put a red on a red uh, kind of thing. And just getting past that can be a little bit of a trouble uh, if you're expecting everyone to just know trick-taking games. Some people don't, uh, even though a heck of a lot of us do. And then there's different rules as to who has to win the hand that has a particular card in it. And each of those games will change that rule. And I think that's what I like about it. It's just every time we play it, there's a different game. Like it's the same mechanism, but it's actually a different game or you're aiming for different cards or different numbers of cards or different orders of cards to come out and win the trick uh, each time. My number five game for February is The Red Cathedral. Once again, I haven't yet done the game plan of The Red Cathedral. I will hopefully get that one done relatively soon also. The Red Cathedral is a interesting game because it feels like it's a much larger game than it actually is. So the whole idea is you have, you're trying to build the cathedral in front of you and you put your marker onto a card and then you have to put the resources onto the card. Once you've got all the resources, you can then flip the card over, you get some points and some bonus stuff from it. The game will finish when someone no longer has anything to build. So once you get all of your markers up and you've built those spots, the game's over. And so you can tend to find that in a portion of the game, you're just kind of doing stuff. And then you go, oh, hang on. If I do this, that will push me towards the end of the game. And that's realistically what you want to do. Because the person who finishes the game, not always, but quite often, will be the winner. Now, this one has a funky scoring mechanism on it as well. That the each tower is looked at and gone, okay, there's four people from that player. There's three from that player. So that's worth seven points to the person who has four on it. The next person down, the person who had three, would get half of that. And it's really interesting to kind of understand that mechanism. The more stuff is on a tower, the more points are going to go to the person who has the majority there. And building up and finding ways to get a higher majority is actually really the way to go. Or go for a tower and just have one point majority. Suddenly you're going to get a whole bunch of points against what the other person has. My number four game for February is Curators. Once again, this is another game that I haven't yet done the game explain for. And once again, I will do it very soon. The concept on this game is that you have a number of cards or tiley cards in front of you. And you choose one of them as the action you can do. You flip that then over. If there are two of the same actions showing, you have to do it twice or do the what they call as the double action. The whole idea is you're building up a library with different colored rooms, I guess you, you'd call it, and you, you have a hand of cards that say, I want to have a black here, a blue here, a black here, and a red there. And you need to build your art gallery in a way that shows that combination of rooms in that order. Now you'll have a number of cards and by the end of the game you actually have a whole bunch of those cards and you're kind of working towards getting all of these things at the same time. And that's where the majority of your points come from. There are also points for getting th things into each of the rooms and there's a lot of different stuff that can happen with actually getting the stuff to the rooms and getting patrons through to get some money so you can buy some more stuff. There's a, a really fine interlocking of what happens and that's really great but it's Finicky is probably the best way to say it. Every player has a 
card that tells them what each thing does, but finding a way through that iconography is actually not the easiest thing. Once you understand the game, it can run really quickly and really well. And and it's actually quite a, quite a nice game. As you can tell, it is my number four game for the month. It's a really good game. Look out for the explanation of this one coming out soon. My number three game for February is Oleon. Oleon is a bag building game. So if you haven't come across it before, you have a bag and you pull out a number of workers from that bag, uh, which are little chits, and those chits show you which type of workers. So they all feel the same and they go onto particular spots. Once you have a correct combination of workers, you can do the thing. There's so much going on in this game that it, it it's like, which way do I go? I don't know how to do well. And the person who won this actually used a different strategy than I ever usually use with it. And they picked up a whole bunch of things on the board over on the, on the side, which if you travel along a path, you get to take the good that is on that path. They picked up all of the really high scoring stuff and end up with a heap of points over the top of everyone else who wasn't really doing that. They were kind of focused on other stuff and other ways to kind of push forward. But this is a really wonderful game. I really, really heavily suggest having a look at it if you haven't seen it before. My number two game for February is Living Forest. Yes, I really like Living Forest. It's one of these games that just kind of came out of nowhere and I only did the game explanation of it, I think last month. Uh, maybe in January, maybe February, I can't remember exactly, but it's it's kind of one of these games that came out of nowhere and and, and it kind of happens and the end just creeps up on you really quickly. But I really enjoy the game of it, the thought of it. It is a deck building game in essence, but you're not having a hand of five cards. You're laying the cards out in front of you and up to a point. So when you've got some negative cards, so if you have two of those showing, you'll get to do two of the actions that are showing on all the cards. If you have three, you can only do one of those actions. But that's kind of the thing to bear in mind. But there's three different ways to win the game. And it's about having, um, I think it's 12 fire tokens or 12 points on the cards and etc. that are in front of you or having 12 trees in the forest. There's a lot of thinking within that, but the game itself actually runs really, really quickly. And my number one game for February is Tuluva. Yes, I once again played Tuluva. Yes, I still do not own a copy of this. Uh, it's just too hard to find, too expensive to get in. And you know what? I've got someone who comes to my my table quite regularly and quite regularly brings Tuluva with them. So I don't really need to have my own copy of it. I really enjoy it. The whole idea of it is that you are placing a tile into a growing island. You're then placing a little building on that. And when you have a certain size of that, you can put another type of building in. Uh, when you get up to a level three, uh, so the third level of that island, you can place a temple, I believe it is, into the spot. And whoever gets rid of two of their types of building first wins the game. It is such a good game, such a, th a thinky, thinky game. Um, I really, really enjoy it. So look, I'll leave it there. That is my top 10 for February. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Games Planner to keep up to date with the games that I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming!